there was that moment that he was saying, I love you in the middle of your pain. I love you in the middle of your disappointment. I love you in the middle of your frustrations. Mm -hmm. Let me heal your heart. God didn't take stripes on his back just for physical healing. That's for emotional healing. Maybe the answers could be found just in being heard and being seen and finding someone else that understands. I was seeing God's hand in the prayers that I was praying for other people. When you are not focused on yourself, it frees you to actually be part of a miracle in somebody else's life. Welcome to I Refresh, where we talk about the power of prayer and God's Word. Welcome to another episode of I Refresh. I have with me my friend Angie Hawkins. Welcome. Hi. Well, I'm glad to be here. Sweet. Well, we've uh, been getting together a little bit. We actually do a little bit of workout. So um, <laughs> it's I, I challenge her for whatever reason to come and join uh, my son and I uh, with a, our personal trainer. And we've had a blast. It's been amazing. She challenges me. I mean, her flexibility is kicking my butt. <laughs> I'm well, not gonna lie. I've, I've done it for She's quite a few amazing. years. I, I love to stay in shape. I love weightlifting. And so mm -hmm. we've had a lot of fun. But in the process of getting to know each other, you know, I'd love to hear like what God has been doing in your life and your story. Oh, so we right. wanted just to come and hear what God has done from early on and what he's called you into. Absolutely. Okay. Well, there's some things I had in my heart to share. And this is a story that's very personal. It's very dear to my heart. And it's really the foundation of who I am and my walk with God that really changed everything for me. Um, I'm a huge fan of saying I left religion and found Jesus and how different those two things are. And if you've been around the world, you've endured life's amazing challenges, <laughs> you know that pain is inevitable. But one of the amazing things I know is that there's a way to prove, there's a way to stop the pain from taking over your life. And there is an encounter, there is an amazing presence that can completely heal even the most broken places. And that was something that happened to me when I was 17 years old. My parents were... I went through a divorce two years prior, and I was raised in church my entire life. But I was so tired of religion. I was so tired of just the monotony of playing church, doing everything perfect, but my heart was closed off. Now, did, being honest. And did your family know that about what you were no. walking through? Or was that was like you did you put a front up to make it seem as though like you're apart and engaged? That's a really good question. Um, I was really good at putting it fronts up. I was okay. so good at making everything seem like it was okay. My friends had no clue that I was dealing with anything like that. Yeah. And I was very private, I was very guarded. Mm -hmm. I had a lot of uh, trust issues the more I encountered things. And I can remember when I, my parents divorced and I came to a point where I said, Jesus, I want, I want a break. I'm, I'm not going to church for a while. I'm putting you in the back. And so t tell me, like, <laughs> what is it? Like, I'm intrigued when people, especially at a young age, like, was there a specific trauma or where did you find that people, they said one thing and they did something else? Like, what caused you to actually blame the church, the church. for what right. your anger? Like, you obviously, there's an anger issue that you're wanting to walk away from, from. a relationship with God when yeah. it's maybe people that attended the church. Is there... Not so much that as much as it was... Um, life in home was very different than life traveling and in churches. As you can imagine, if you're called to the ministry or you're a part of a family who is called to that... The enemy attacks hard. So when you're preaching the gospel, you're being mm -hmm. a light, your home gets hit pretty hard. So your was, dad, okay, so to make it clear, your dad is a traveling, like an evangelist? Yes, my okay. dad's a traveling minister. Yeah. My mm -hmm. parents are traveling at that time together. And mm -hmm. um, in the midst of that, tension rises, things happen, and, you know, life happens. <laughs> it's almost like when you were, like, in COVID and you're in this contained area and there's, yeah. like, no break from each other. There's no break. You're in the yes. car a lot. Tensions rise. Things yeah. happen. And ultimately, people can, you know, grow apart, go their separate ways. Sure. And I remember as a kid thinking, what did I do to deserve this? You know, kind of a thing, you know, and you're so upset at something that took place that was out of your control. So was it you just wanted things. to be in a home and a stability of staying at home versus less, always traveling and not being around friends? Probably some of that, but I think more than that, it was just not really knowing God for myself. 
uh, I think it's really common if you're a PK kid, which is a pastor's kid yeah. or a preacher's kid, you kind of write on the back of your parents' relationship with the Lord, and you don't fully develop it your own self. So you know of God, but you don't know him intimately. You don't have that relationship established to much more than a surface level, oftentimes, because you're, you're using their relationship and you're assuming that it's your own because so you're everything you've heard and been taught. Yeah, and you I kind of grow from that. So you find, like, it didn't seem real what you're you were hearing your father teach. Like, because, I, I mean, I came up from a, I came in, out of the ministry with my parents in music ministry. So, like, my story's a little bit different. So I'm yeah. kind of curious if it just didn't resonate or it didn't make sense with no, you. No, not necessarily that. It was mm-hmm. just a place where, you know, if any time your parents split your world's turn upside down. And you're feeling okay. the pain and the emotion of that. Okay. And at that point, you're questioning everything, you know, okay, okay. God we did so many things for you. What happened here? So, why did this happen? And I remember just being in that place where I wanted space. I didn't understand why something like that could have happened. You know, your world's mm-hmm. turned upside down. You have resentment mm-hmm. that's there. Yeah. And what I love most, and God wasn't afraid of that. Just being honest where I was. Here he knew I had to close my heart. Right. But that was a point where he wanted to prove to me how it really was. And I was in a place where I had nightmares and just going through bad dreams of the events that took place. And I was in my room one night, and all of a sudden I just was upset at the Lord. I was like, I'm blaming you for this. I'm sure you weren't doing this yourself, but I'm still blaming you, you know, as a kid. And I remember one night when I was so upset, all of a sudden I had a panic attack, which I normally had, that never happened to me before. And in that moment, I just, I had my eyes closed, and I just got real and honest, probably for the first time, Mm -hmm. and said, Jesus, I know you're real, but prove it to me. Prove it now, or I'm walking away from everything. My brother already had at that point, and I was considering doing the same thing. And in that moment, as soon as I said those words, all of a sudden, this huge peace just filled the room. So strong, I couldn't feel the carpet anymore. I couldn't feel anything. I really don't know if I was in my room at that point, but the presence just filled so heavily. Isn't that great though when you think about when the scriptures so talks about amazing. like yeah. if you know if like if when he says if he I, you will call on me mm-hmm. he says he will answer you and he will show you great yeah. and mighty things which is like he's literally that's the and, moment you're hearing the word mm-hmm. and come alive in your life for the first time where you begin to own it and have yeah. a direct communications with God yourself and not based on anything you observed from your folks, but right. it was, he wanted to meet you. He wanted to meet and beautiful. really did. And I think it was because I was so genuine. I wasn't saying it sarcastically. I was very from the bottom of my heart saying, prove this to me. Right. And in that moment, the atmosphere is intensifying in the room. My eyes are shut, and I hear someone open the door and walk in. And now every hair on my arm is standing up because I'm like, somebody's in my room. And then the wind, like, someone walks by you, you feel kind of like a wind shift. Well, I felt that. Now I'm like, he's in my room. He's in my room. Yeah. And he kneels down beside me, right next to me, and says these words that I'll never forget. He said, if you'll open your heart to me, I promise you I'll heal it. I didn't cause that divorce, but I'll heal your heart if you'll let me. Mm-hmm. And those words just rocked me. And I was just, I bawled and cried and felt so much like, I don't even know, it felt like honey just running through me. It was this warm feeling all over and this tangible peace, so incredibly strong. Mm -hmm. And at that moment, I I sat there because I was shocked that it happened because I told him to get out of my life, and he came back for me. Mm -hmm. I couldn't figure out why he would do that because I I had this mentality that we have to do everything perfect, we have to do everything right. If we mess up, God's so mad and disappointed And all of that was completely undone in one moment. Mm -hmm. And in that same moment, I sat there and I just, tears of joy, I said, yes, Jesus, I want you back in. I want you back in my life. So is that a place where you just found that the Lord showed you how to repent of how you had come against God and blamed God? Because, I mean, that that is actually, I hear that, like for many people, that we, when life happens, Our first attack is towards God versus realizing God actually gave every Mm -hmm. one of us a will. Yeah. And we all make our own choices. And the problem is, is my choices can influence and affect you. Sure. Um, And so I'm just kind of curious, like, did you feel like God was allowing you to just to have a heart 
transformation? There is a heart for transformation and a lot of misconceptions about God just completely being undone. Mm -hmm. Not really knowing who he was. I had one small, very, mm -hmm. very narrow view of who God was. Mm -hmm. And it was all performance-based. Having no revelation of really the grace of God, the mercy of God, the love of God on that level in sure. my entire life. And that became so clear in that moment how wide his grace was for my disappointments, my frustrations, um, things that I may have been upset at him for or in life and, and as a whole. Mm -hmm. And his grace and his mercy meeting me right there, undoing every lie the enemy put in my mind about God. You know, because the more we want to pursue God, the enemy doesn't want you to get to know the true character of God. He'll do everything to bring situations, attacks, and things mm -hmm. that will make you question, mm -hmm. does God love you? Mm -hmm. Does he care about you? Like Job, attack here, attack there, all mm -hmm. over the place. Right. And it's like, did God really say this? Does God really care? Is he really providing for you? Does he really show up when you need him? Mm -hmm. And it's just the enemy's way of bringing division and separation between you and the Lord. Mm -hmm. And all of that was undone in that moment. And what's so neat was that marked me where I didn't have to earn my way to talk to him. I didn't have to have everything perfect and right. There was that moment that he was saying, I love you in the middle of your pain. I love you in the middle of your disappointment. I love you in the middle of your frustrations. Mm -hmm. Let me heal your heart. Let me in to the door of your heart. Mm -hmm. And that was the moment where I knew I didn't. I let him in a section. And I'd so... Interesting that I met friends, same thing. We let God in a piece of our heart. But maybe these this other piece where we have questions, we don't have answers to, right. we have some trust or disconnect, we don't let him into that side could, out of protection or a defense mechanism. Right. And God's saying, I want 100% of your heart, not just a piece. Mm -hmm. And that was the night that I gave him 100% of my heart, letting him in every piece that I didn't understand of things and letting him touch every fabric. You no, know, the thing is, too, is that you had to make a choice because of the one thing we know that the Holy Spirit is a gentleman. Yes, he is. He doesn't force his will in his way. So mm -hmm. he's always wooing us, drawing us to a place where we will recognize yeah. God desires to give us so many things, a peace, comfort, joy. Uh, he wants to have right relationship with us. Mm -hmm. And for us to, to have an encounter that helps to really pivot us into the correct direction. You know, yeah. it's, it's such a testimony of the unfailing love of God that he's yeah. always doing something to get us to, back on course if we get wayward. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And I love that he's so relentless in his pursuit for our hearts. No matter what the enemy does, no matter what life throws our way, God is so relentless to keep reaching out, to keep turning things around if we're open, if we invite him in. And that was the place where I knew it was a decision I had to make. God, I invite you into this place. Right. I invite you into my hurt, into my pain, because he won't jump in. He won't override our free will. You're so right, right on that. He won't override right. that. Mm -hmm. He needs our permission to yeah. turn things around. Right. And that was what was good. Well, and you see, when cause, you know, it's interesting because, you know, we can say, like, I'll give you all my heart. But then there's times later on, you know, throughout life, you realize, like, okay, I have conditions. Yes. Because you're like, well, you're like, yeah. I, I yield everything. I, she, you know, I Except surrender this. it all. And then you don't realize life happens. And you're like, okay, I, can't, I took back control. Right. And it, it, that is the thing. is It is an ongoing process. It's part of our living that walk with the Lord is we're like, oh, I picked this up. I picked yes. up the burden. I picked up her. And the Lord is always having to remind us mm -hmm. to yield things back to him because he does a better job of overseeing yes. those parts that's in our heart, right? Yes. So. Well, and he's faithful too. You know, that's what's really kept me going back because I love to have things go perfectly well. I'm a planner. I'm an organizer. Yes. I love things smooth. Mm -hmm. And I want to hold the reins <laughs> right. of my life a lot of times. And there are times that I admit that I'll want to take that back. And, okay, God, I got this. You know, if I need your help, I'll, I'll get you. <laughs> but in the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and keep moving forward. Right. And, and in those moments where I realize, okay, once again, I need God's wisdom, not my own, and come back. And I think on his faithfulness. If he was faithful to reach out to me then, he's faithful to reach out to me now. And if I have questions, if I'm running into situations that I need his wisdom and things don't go according to plan, his faithfulness is there to meet me mm -hmm. where it doesn't matter what's going on, what's unseen, what questions I have, what things are unfolding. God's wisdom and his faithfulness are there to get me back on course mm -hmm. and ready to navigate me on his path that he has for me. As long as I'm a willing and teachable and let him in the door of my heart. Mm -hmm. And that's what I love. He's persistent and he's relentless and constant and unchanging. He's always pursuing. He's always yeah. 
showing up and being there. And even if sometimes we're not praying, he moves on someone else's heart to pray for us. Because he he covers us. Yeah, Yeah. through everything. Tell me, that was at the age of 17. What did God begin to do? What was the process he took you to where you're at even today? Like, what has he been going through and taking you through the healing? Mm -hmm. What was the next things that he was doing in your life? That was the foundation of intimacy, Mm -hmm. where I began to really make it a priority to spend time with God. Mm -hmm. Um, Busyness, we're all guilty of it, and it's so easy (laughs) to do a quick 10-minute fix in the morning to patch things over that day and keep doing that. But that was where the desire and the hunger for more developed. Mm -hmm. I wanted more of Him. I wanted a relationship with Him where I talk, He answers back. I'm not necessarily fasting for two hours to get a response. Mm -hmm. And I wanted that level of closeness, of relationship with Him. It wasn't enough to just have things mediocre, where I talk to him when I have an emergency, like an ATM fund, and I just cash things in and out when I need him, and then I don't see or talk to him in between. And I think I had a habit of just, I talk to God, I talk to the Lord on Sunday mornings, maybe on a Wednesday night, and a couple minutes in the morning, that was it. And that wasn't enough anymore. Mm -hmm. There was this burning desire to truly know him as my best friend. And that's where that journey started. He went from being my Lord to my best friend where I told him everything. And now, I mean, it could be guide drama. It could be (laughs) friendships, relationships. I'm like, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? And what was so neat was he truly became my best friend because things that were important to me, whether it was just a new job, leaving for a car, Mm -hmm. you know, believing in God's best, he cared so deeply about Mm -hmm. each of those things. Mm -hmm. And that was another misconception I had. I really thought that God only cared about the big things making sure we did the call, making sure we're obedient to his word, but things that were important to me was not really on his priority list. And I was so pleasantly surprised to find out he cared about the little things. And that journey is where things developed Mm -hmm. that were turned into big things. I mean, especially dating or whatever have you. I would always go to the Lord. Lord, what do you think about this? What do you think about this relationship? What do you think about this person? What do you think about this job? And he'd always tell me. But and that's his character, though, because we know him. in Psalms 37, it talks about how he says, I am, he is caught up in the details of our lives. Yes. And we don't recognize that until we start looking and seeing when we are in a place of submission to him and asking mm-hmm. for his yeah. wisdom and understanding and things. Um, you know, I think you can also get it to the place where you want the wisdom because you don't want to fail. Because, right. you know, like when I hear you're a planner, <laughs> I, I get that. There's also, there's a part, though, I've learned sometimes uh, in that process, too, is we have to be careful that it doesn't lead to a pride. Sure. Because we don't want to, we want to be perfect. We want, sure. you know, our, our intent mm-hmm. might be that we want to be perfect. And sometimes, you know, failures sometimes are the best places of success because mm-hmm. we learn, like, okay, without him, I really am not going to succeed, and I really just mm-hmm. need to learn. And every experience we walk through is a, a learning to abide, stay in that place, be in the Word, knowing what His thoughts are, His character, yeah. and what He's trying to do to perfect in us, mm-hmm. ultimately, perfection. But, you know, right. I think that'll be on the other side of glory. But the process, <laughs> it, it's painful at the moments, but like the, I, I love, though, that you're passionately we're pursuing Him. We are. Absolutely. And knowing that sometimes in, in that process when we ask him, there's times when he's quiet. So mm-hmm. did you even, yes, he talks, but sometimes you feel like he's quiet. And what do you do in those moments where you're like, I don't know if I got a response from him. Right. In those moments, I love what it talks about in Jeremiah where it says, call to me and I will answer you. Mm-hmm. It doesn't say he might. Mm-hmm. So if I'm asking him something and I'm not getting a response, the response is on that disconnects on my end. What distractions of voices are hindering that inward witness Mm -hmm. and that inward voice from getting that clarity from the Lord? Mm -hmm. What can I do to fine tune into his connection? What can I take out? Okay, Lord, I need to get all the noise out so I can get in tune with you and hear through my spirit what you're saying to me. Mm -hmm. Because you're not withholding any good thing. Your word says that. Your word says to call to me. I will answer you. So if I'm not getting an answer, there's something hanging up the frequency on my end. It's not on his ever. And so I learned to Mm -hmm. get quiet. And I was like, okay, Lord, I'm cutting out my social media time. I'm cutting out my TV time. I'm going to cut out everything that's a distraction and hindrance that's keeping me from getting what you're saying. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to spend time in your presence. Mm Because in his presence, there's fullness of joy, there's peace. And that creates the atmosphere for that that? direction. 
I have my worship music. I am so key for that. I yeah. turn on, you know, Israel Hooten or I've got on different worship artists yeah. and I'm creating an atmosphere that invites his company into my living room, wherever I'm at. Yeah. I want a presence that helps it make it easy to hear from him. Sure. And really it's recognition. I think we say hear a lot, but it's recognizing what he's saying and putting in our hearts because mm -hmm. he doesn't always speak audibly. That's kind of few and far between, right. but often right. it's recognizing what is God saying? It's the difference is it's his wisdom that sounds like your voice because he's talking to your spirit right. and recognizing things that are in your heart. So I, I get myself into neutral. Yeah. I'm not for or against whatever I'm asking. I'm saying, Lord, here's the topic. Mm -hmm. Here's what I want guidance and counsel on. I present this before you. Mm -hmm. I put myself in neutral. I'm not for or against or needing to hear a yes or a no. I quit asking those questions because then I'm forcing a certain answer. Yeah. I'll say, Lord, here's the subject. What do you say about this? And that was actually a game changer in my prayer life where I quit asking, do you want me to take this? Do you not? Do you want me to do this? Do you not? I quit saying questions that demanded a yes or no answer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I began to say, what do you think about this? And now the discussion is open for him to freely share mm -hmm. what his thoughts are for that. And I began to recognize so much easier what was God's wisdom, what was him communicating to my spirit, yeah. what he had to say on that topic. That's good. Took all the pressure off, not yes or no, what do you think? You know, because I, I think you're mm -hmm. right, because so often we're just looking for a yes or no, and mm -hmm. if we don't get the yes or no, and there's something, there's another, there's another <laughs> uh, C. Yeah. I'm right. Like, I'm like, oh, okay. And that's a yeah. good learning experience. So it's great that the Lord has revealed that to you mm -hmm. just to help you to really look in our, what if, if I don't give you those answers? Right. You know, maybe God's got another plan or his timing is... Is different than it, our timetable. Which it always is. <laughs> it always is. I'm like, it you can visualize is. all things all, all day long, but it, yeah. it, it always looks different. But it's the journey of the process mm -hmm. of leaning into him that's uh, the adventure. Well, and I like to make things as easy as possible. Mm -hmm. And I just would always say, Lord, I've always went to you about a subject. And when you would give me direction, I would assume it meant a certain thing. Sure. And now I add it into my, I don't call it a formula, but my process of talking to the Lord, mm -hmm. I would say, I believe you're saying this to me mm -hmm. when I'm getting my, the wisdom direction. What do you mean by that? Because there were so many times that I took at face value right. those words and assumed it meant at face value what it said. Right. And there were so many occasions where he said something, but he meant wow. in a completely different message, That's interesting. a completely different direction. And so I would say, Lord, I believe you're saying this. What do you mean by that? And one time it almost cost me going a step in a direction and a career wise that would have been detrimental. Because I was saying, okay, Lord, I believe you're saying this. And I'm like, gung-ho, let's go after it. Right. And something was just right. uneasy. And I learned to pay attention. If something's not quite right, go to God. What is that? Don't just keep going forward. Yeah. God is 100%. If there's something mm -hmm. that makes you a little uneasy, pay mm -hmm. attention to that. And yeah. take that time well, to find out what that is. Right, there's key is taking time because, you know, yeah. I, I feel like I think sometimes when we feel like we get a little bit of something, we just run with it. Mm -hmm. I've learned over time, <laughs> like, you know, he reveals things once in a while, but part of it yeah. is now are you going to wait on the timing of when you're supposed to move forward? So mm -hmm. there's also a wisdom, even when he tells yeah. you something, of knowing there's a grace for it. And mm -hmm. he's not in a rush. Right. No, he's never in a rush. He's a, we are. Yeah, but he's exactly. Not. <laughs> Boom, let's go. Let's go, Lord. We need to accomplish that yesterday. And I'm very yeah. much that way. I'm like, yeah. hey, Lord, I, I love multitasking. I love to get stuff done. Yes. Let's get after it. And he's like, where's the fire? I need you to chill. Exactly. <laughs> Let me give you the rest before you run the wrong direction, you know. Well, anyway. you know, that's really important, too, because I think that a lot of people that might be experiencing it when listening yeah. here that they're going through some serious discouragement. Mm -hmm. It's like a hope deferred. Like, I, right. I thought I heard God. And I think that we then begin to doubt what God's put on our hearts. Those dreams right. that the Lord put on our hearts, we start to overanalyze it, and then we start to break it down, and we it just falls apart because mm -hmm. something happened, and it wasn't necessarily the timing of the Lord. Right. Right. Yeah, so. Well, there's a few factors. I mean, if something's not going the way I thought, mm -hmm. I check on a couple things. One of them is, was my will involved? Because I'm, I pay attention now more than ever. Mm -hmm. I can't afford to keep missing things from God. We're, I mean, yes, we will. Yeah. But if I can minimize that, yeah. I'm saying, Lord, okay, I, I have this subject. I believe you told me to do this. It's not going that way. And I'll go back and I'll look mm -hmm. at the notes. What did God not say? Number one. 
-hmm. I have a lot of interpretations and I'll get this one thing he said and then I've got my spin on it or the added in fill in the blank part (laughs) that I I added. Okay, he said this, but what he meant by that was X, (laughs) Y, Z. And then I'm running that direction and he said, I never said that. What did I not say? And I'm like, okay, Lord, I go back. You didn't say this, this, and this. Everything I assumed that you said. You only said this. And I'm literally to take God is very much a man of his word. He's what he said, he will finish, he will do. If he didn't say it, he's not authorized to complete it or perform it. And so if he didn't say it, I can't expect him to fulfill it. And I started going back saying, okay, he did not say this, I assumed. And then I check also, am I a neutral? Am I still listening to him and making sure that I'm not fighting for a certain direction or fighting against it, but I'm continually saying, Lord, whatever you want, whatever your will, I believe you're saying this and I'm following that, but I'm not pushing for my agenda anymore, my desires my wants. Mm. And that keeps me from steering the wheel a certain way. If I'm a neutral, he has the say, he has the reins. But if I keep my opinions at the forefront and my desires that I, then the Lord no longer has the steering wheel of my life. I do. Well, that's a life of frustration. (laughs) I was going to say, there's nothing going to be good about that one, even though that's really self-involved, selfish and you know, nobody is going to get the blessing because I really believe that the Lord, what he puts on us and what he wants to mm-hmm. do in each one of us is so that we influence people around to right. bless them. Right. Just like, you know, when God was giving, you know, both Abraham, mm-hmm. even in Jacob, when Jacob saw, had an encounter with God, he's like, I'm going to give you the land. I'm going to bless your family. So it's going to go right. for generations. But the right. other part was so great is he says, and, and other nations will be blessed because of you. Mm-hmm. And he said, then I'm going to watch over you and I'm going to be with you. Amen. And I'm like, that's what God desires to do in us. So when God's directing us, is it's not just for my own personal gain, but it right. should be, if he's really speaking to us, he's probably going to do something that's going to have a, a beautiful impact on the lives right. around us. And then we know it's God. Then we do. Exactly. Well, and God thinks so outside the box. Anything he's Mm -hmm. asking us to do, there's always people connected to our obedience. And I'm learning to say, if I don't obey God in this, how many lives are being are going to be affected by my decisions? If I don't obey God and what he's asking, it's not just me that's at stake. It's not just my life that gets to be put on hold or my life that can be negatively affected. It's so many thousands of others that are connected to my obedience and my yes that are now paying the price for my decision. And I remember the Lord, he's so, he's so blunt with me now because I'm very blunt. So he's that way in return. <laughs> and he'll say, what gave you the right to make that decision? And I'm like, well, you're right. Thank you. Nobody but me. <laughs> I gave myself the right. If I'm being honest. And he, he'll, you know, he's got an amazing sense of humor the more I get to know him. Because I'm just I'm like, well, Lord, I don't want to do that. And he's like, well, I didn't ask you if you wanted to. And I was like, okay, <laughs> I'll follow you. You're it's right. It's test. Because yeah. he's just like, if you're committed to me, if you're absolutely yielded to me, then you're yielded to my plan. Even if you don't have all the answers and you have one step in front of you, are you going to take that next step? Or are you going to keep asking a thousand questions before you take one? Right. And he knows me that way. And I was like, you're right. Okay, I'll take that step. Because sure. it's my, it's on my end to obey God and trust him with the consequences. Mm-hmm. Whatever the end result is, it's on his end. But it's on my end for the obedience side. So That's awesome. Anyway, <laughs> so as we're closing, yes. I would love you to just talk to our audience and just really encourage them because because you knew what God has done in your life that, mm-hmm. you know, he took you from a place of brokenness and he brought restoration right. and, for, and he you were able to create right. a dialogue with him because you finally said yes. And that yeah. intimate relationship with God has been such a key factor in your life. How can you talk to people on both sides where they're contemplating it or they're not interested or to the people that just need to be encouraged for the brokenness to be healed? Well, and I would say give God the opportunity to prove you wrong. I was never so glad to be wrong about God. I was so pleasantly surprised. I I think it's important to get in a place where you're done with religion, you're done with living up to a certain standard of having everything perfect. And for once, you're just going to be completely honest, completely open, raw and real with the Lord and tell him right where you are, Mm -hmm. no facade, and say, Lord, prove yourself to me. Because that's what took place for me. I came to a place where I said, no more games, no more church face, no more pretending. Prove yourself to me. Mm -hmm. And in that moment was when he healed my heart. 
And so my heart's desire for you is to be open with the Lord and say, I'm inviting you in to every broken place, every place I don't trust you, every place that I've been frustrated at, every place that I've had so many questions and no answers, every place that I don't understand, come and heal my heart. And in that place, that's where he heals and restores your heart to a place that was better than before. Mm -hmm. Before the doubt, before the hurt, before the pain got in, God has in a miraculous way of healing that place mm -hmm. where there was no trace of hurt left. That's so good. And that's what I invite you to. Come to that place and just ask him, prove yourself to me, heal my heart. And in that moment, you'll see another side of the Lord you never would have encountered, never would have dreamed that his love and his desire to be your friend, to fight for your heart mm -hmm. on another level. We want to be fought for, I think as women, we want someone that will do what they say, that are they can back up what they say, that their love is relentless in their pursuit for us. Mm -hmm. The Lord is the man of my heart. He is relentless in his pursuit for me. Yeah. And because he's proven that to me now, I can't help but give him my heart out of an expression of gratitude and love that he's done so much for me when I didn't deserve it. I, I didn't deserve any of those things. My actions definitely didn't, <laughs> you know, deserve that. He still came running after me and he'll come, he's coming running after you. Mistakes, your past, he loves you Amen. in the middle of it all. Amen. Well, thank you, Angie. I really appreciate you sharing your story. And we want to invite you to go out to irefresh.net and, and right there are some great resources. Maybe you're contemplating where maybe you don't even have a relationship with Jesus Christ. We want to invite you into that. As, as Angie has shared her testimony, it became from a place of fake to a real reality of knowing the value of knowing Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And mm -hmm. we have resources to learn more about that and reach out to us. You can email us, call us. We'd love to pray with you if you would like. You know, there's so many times that we just need encouragement. And as as the body of Christ, we're there to help and encourage you in your walk with the yes. Lord. If you if you don't have one or it's it's in a place where you're not sure about it, we want to spur you on to growing. There's so many different uh, options out there to learn how to pray the Word of God over in the praying scriptures and so many other things that you can use to build your faith up, to believe that God is amazing. He is for you. He's got yes. great plans ahead. So thank you again Amen. for sharing. I appreciate it, Angie. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. Mm -hmm. Good God.